Hello, everyone. Welcome to Catherine's ESL classroom. In today's lesson, we are going to learn subject verb agreement. Why is subject verb agreement important? Well, it's important so the reader or the audience, the one that you are communicating with, does not get confused. So let's get started and learn some more. Welcome again, everyone. Today's lesson. Subject verb agreement. Today's lesson, we are going to learn usages and examples. This will be our part one. Subject verb agreement, usages and examples. So get ready. When the subject is plural, the verb is plural. For example, they are thirsty. Jack and Jill like to climb hills. Hint, just to give you a hint, watch for the verb and, and makes the subject plural. You see, and, More on the usage for subject is plural. Some nouns are hard to know if they are plural. For example, the scissors are sharp. The scissors is sharp. Does that sound correct to you? No. Scissors is plural. Remember, it has the S at the end. The only time we would say is, the, use the verb is, we would say the scissor is sharp. Well, we usually say scissors because it has two pointy edges. See over here, two parts. Another one is the tweezers were lost or the tweezers was lost. Which one do you think is correct? The tweezers were lost, okay? So tweezers are plural and so are scissors. Remember, if they have two parts, two parts are plural. Tweezers have two parts, just like scissors. Starting to make sense? All right. Now, another usage of subjects is connected by or. When two singular subjects are connected by or, the verb is singular. For example, the book or the pen is in the draw. Another one is Jack or Jill likes to climb hills. Now a hint is it's singular because the verb is describing one subject, okay? One subject would be book or the pen. Okay, Jack is the subject or Jill. Now, what would happen if we use and? Then it would become plural, right? All right, starting to get the hang of it. Remember, the book is in the drawer. Okay, or the pen is in the drawer. Starting to get it? What about this one? Jack likes to climb. Jill likes to climb. You see, starting to make more sense. When we use or, we're describing the singular subject, okay? Only one of the subjects. Now, when there is a singular or plural subject connected by or, the verb agrees with the subject that's closest. For example, either the boy or his parents walk down the street. How does this look? The girls 
or John stances every Tuesday. Okay, so which one is the closest? Parents. Parents is closer than boy. So the verb, it becomes plural. Okay. What about this one? Which one is closest? Girls or John? John is closer than girls. So the verb is singular. Okay. See, this should be John dances. Okay. Not dances every. Sorry about that. But we know that John is closer than girls. So the verb is singular. Now, doesn't and don't. Doesn't, remember that's your contraction, equals does plus not. It's a singular verb, so it matches with the singular. The subject don't plus equals do plus not. Remember your contraction don't is do not. It becomes a plural verb. It matches with the plural subject. For example, he doesn't like it. <clears throat> Remember, he does not like it. They don't like it. You see? So if, if you don't like the contraction, just break it apart. He does not like it. They do not like it. So the more you repeat it, the more it's going to sound better to you. It'll start to come naturally to you. So let's repeat. He doesn't like it. He does not like it. Let's do this one. They don't like it. They do not like it. Now there is an exception. When the subject is I or you, we use the plural verb don't. I don't like it. You don't like it. Let's repeat. I don't like it. Repeat. Great. Repeat this one. You don't like it. Repeat. Great job. Now, don't get tricked by all the other nouns added between the subject and the verb. For example, one of the boxes is open. Okay, now here's another one. The team captain, as well as his teammates, is nervous. Just repeat the sentences after me. Don't worry yet. The woman with six dogs walks down the street. Okay, so remember, don't get tricked by all the other nouns added between the subject and the verb. Okay, so you're probably wondering why. One is open. Remember, don't get tricked. Don't get fooled by the other ones. It's just one is open. The captain, remember, team, you know that that's plural, but we're talking about the captain. Team is, is the adjective for captain. It's the type of captain. We don't want to get rid, we don't want to get confused with these, right? With teammates. So what do we say? The captain is nervous. I know this is a little tricky. So you have to know what the subject noun is. The subject noun is we're talking about the captain. What about this one? What would be the subject noun here? Ah. Woman, the woman, the woman walks down the street. Okay. Woman walks down the street. Okay, let's just repeat these again. We're going to say the whole sentence, and then you're going to repeat. 
one of the boxes is open. Repeat. Now repeat this. One is open. Repeat. Great. Let's do the next one. The team captain, as well as his teammates, is nervous. Repeat. Now repeat this. The captain is nervous. Great. Let's do the last one. The woman with six dogs walks down the street. Repeat. Great job. Now repeat this one. The woman walks down the street. Awesome. Starting to make more sense? Yes. Now remember, just ignore them and keep your eyes on the subject, meaning ignore all the other nouns that are between the subject and the verb. You have to understand what the subject noun is, what we are talking about. Now these words are singular subjects. They're matched with singular verb. Let's repeat these, <clears throat> all the ones in red. Each, each, each one, either, neither, every one. You're repeating after me? Everybody, anybody, anyone, nobody, somebody. Someone, no one. Now, let's repeat this sentence together. Each of these hot dogs is yummy. Now you see your preposition of? So we're not talking about, we're, we're talking about each. Each hot dog or each of these hot dogs is yummy. Everybody knows Mr. Gilder. Repeat. Everybody knows Mr. Gilder. Great job. I know these are a little tricky. So the best thing you could do is just keep repeating them and then it'll become more natural to you. Now, hint again, ignore the other nouns, okay? So the other nouns, remember, if it has a comma, you want to separate your nouns and your verbs, just find your subject. Okay, that would be the best thing, cross it out. Now, some words have an S, but require a singular verb. For example, let's repeat these, okay? Civics mathematics, dollars, measles, news, physics. The news is boring. Physics is a fun subject, okay? They starting to make more sense? You probably hear these already in our regular language. You're probably hearing them from your friends or family or maybe reading this already. So maybe these are a little bit easier for you, but a lot of times people think that these are plural nouns, but they are not. They act as a singular noun, okay? Now money versus dollars. This is the tricky one. Dollars is special. An amount of money is a singular verb. For example, $20 is a lot of money. Okay. So think of $20. You wouldn't say $20 are a lot of money. I know a lot of you say this, but it's incorrect. Think of the $20 bill, okay? It's only one bill, right? So that's the way to remember it. $20 is a lot of money. We wouldn't say $20. We would say $20 is a lot of money. What about 
$50 is a lot of money, right? The dollars themselves is a plural verb. Oh my goodness, that is very tricky. Well, let's see. Dollars are often used in the United States. Now, if we are talking about an amount of money, the amount is 20, then it's singular verb. If we are just talking about the dollars themselves, just using the word dollars, then it's plural. Okay. When the sentence has there is or there are, the subject is after the verb. Hmm? Don't worry. There are many questions. There is a question. Okay, so the subject is after the verb. What would be the subject here? Questions. All right. What about this one? Where would be the subject? Question. Okay. There are many questions. There is a question. Okay. So think of you have a lot of question marks here. We only have one question mark. Okay. Now, some nouns imply more than one person, but it's still considered one subject and one singular verb. Hint, there's just one team, one family, one group. Okay, let's repeat these. Team, family, group, committee, class, crew. Let's repeat these together. The team runs during practice. The family has gone camping. Okay. How does that sound to you? So starting to sound a little bit easier for you or a little bit hard, okay? Only way to remember if it's hard for you is just memorize them or just read more and then it'll become more natural. But here, just repeat them. The team runs during practice. Now you do. Repeat this one. The family has gone camping. Now you say, all right. Team runs. Family has. Now for each of the following, choose the sentence in which the subject and verb agree. That will be our quiz and we'll have that next. But today was just on the usage and the rules. So stay tuned for a subject and verb agreement quiz. Until next time, have a wonderful day.